السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله الله تعالى بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا فصلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن استن بسنته واهتدى بهديه إلى يوم الدين يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويكفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن خير الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم 
وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل بدعة ضلالة. My dear respected brothers in Islam, let me begin as always by asking that we turn off these electronic devices, cell phones, and pagers, which have a tendency to ring at the most inopportune and inappropriate time and disturb us during our ibadah. I also humbly request, as always, that you open your ears, your hearts, and your minds to what I'm about to say. Brothers and sisters, on May 25th, 2020, George Floyd, an African American man, was murdered by four police officers as he begged for his life, screamed for his mother, and said repeatedly, I can't breathe. The reason why Floyd couldn't breathe was because he was handcuffed and lying down on his face while one of those officers pressed his knee into the back of his neck for eight minutes and 46 seconds. When that officer finally released that chokehold, George Floyd was unresponsive. And those officers made no attempt to revive him or to administer CPR. The incident was captured on video, and now the whole world has seen how mercilessly George Floyd was treated and how brutally he was killed. And the question that I would like us to ponder together today is, should we as Muslims care? Yeah, Juan, these cell phones, Someone is on the cell phone and has been on the cell phone since we started the khutbah. If that person is disinterested in the khutbah, disinterested in the service, then that person could give that space to someone who would love to be here, but because of limited space could not be here. If you are so busy with the phone, then leave that spot for someone who wants to pray and can't pray because you are occupying that space. The question I would like for us to ponder today, brothers and sisters, is should we as Muslims care? And the reason why I'm asking this question is because I have seen the past few days some Muslims who are arguing quite vigorously that we shouldn't care. We shouldn't care. They even go so far, some of them, to question the religious commitment of any person who is even slightly concerned, upset, or troubled by George Floyd's murder at the hands of police. And they offer a few reasons why they say we as Muslims shouldn't care. For example, they say we shouldn't care because George Floyd wasn't a Muslim. George Floyd was a Catholic. And why? Should we, as Muslims in America, care what happens to the kuffar? Brothers and sisters, this logic is flawed. Because in our religion, this beautiful religion, life, any life, every life, all life is precious. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, min ajli thalik, كَتَبَنَا عَلَى بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ أَنَّهُ مَنْ قَتَلَ نَفْسًا بِغَيْرِ نَفْسٍ أَوْ فَسَادٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ فَكَأَنَّمَا قَتَلَ النَّاسَ جَمِيعًا وَمَنْ أَحْيَاهَا فَكَأَنَّمَا أَحْيَا النَّاسَ جَمِيعًا He says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, it was for this reason that we ordained for the children of Israel that whoever kills a person except as a penalty for murder or criminal activity throughout the land warranting execution, then it would be as if he had killed the whole of mankind. And if he spared a life, it would be as if he spared all of mankind. 
Even the life of an animal, brothers and sisters, even the life of an animal in our religion is precious. And taking the life of an animal without a just cause is a heinous crime in our religion. The Prophet ﷺ, he says the Hadith of Muslim, عُذِّبَتْ إِمْرَأَةٌ فِي هِرَّةٌ سَجَنَتْهَا حَتَّى مَاتَتْ فَدَّخَلَتْ فِيهَا النَّارُ لَا هِيَ أَطْعَمَتْهَا وَسَقَتْهَا إِذْ حَبَسَتْهَا وَلَا هِيَ تَرَكَتْهَا تَأْكُلْ مِنْ خَشَاشْ الْأَرْضِ He said صلى الله عليه وسلم, a woman was punished for a cat which she confined until it died. She entered the fire because of it. She neither fed the cat and gave it drink, nor did she set it free to eat of the earth's vermin. Brothers and sisters, if the life of a cat is precious, how much more precious is the life of a human being, whether Muslim or non-Muslim? Brothers and sisters, they say, we shouldn't care about George Floyd because George Floyd wasn't exactly an angel. George Floyd had a long criminal record. George Floyd had been in and out of prison, and so therefore George Floyd got exactly what he deserved. This logic, brothers and sisters, is flawed because it gives the impression that in order for a person's life to be sacred, that person has to be an angel. That person has to be sinless. And if this is the case, then no one's life is sacred. Your life isn't sacred. My life isn't sacred. No one's life is sacred. Because at the end of the day, all of us are sinners. As the Prophet ﷺ, he said, كل ابن آدم خطا. Every human being is a habitual sinner. Maybe you didn't do what George Floyd did, but you've got your own baggage. You've got your own sins. And if sinlessness is what's required for your life to be sacred, then all of us are what? All of us are damned. All of us are doomed. Also, in our religion, oppression is wrong. No matter who the victim of the oppression is, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qudsi Hadith, Ya ibadi, inni haramtu dhulma ala nafsi wa ja'altuhu baynakum muharrama fala tabalamu. O my servants, indeed, I have forbidden myself from oppression and I have made oppression prohibited amongst yourselves. So do not oppress one another. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered us, the Muslims, to be just. شهداء بالقسط ولا يجرمنكم شنآن قوم على أن لا تعدلوا اعدلوا هو أقرب للتقوى Oh you who believe be firm in your commitment to Allah witnesses to justice and do not allow your hatred for a people to cause you to abandon justice to swerve away from justice be just it is nearer to piety. And fear Allah. Allah is indeed all aware of what you do. Hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka da bin Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'i. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka da bin Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi Brothers and sisters, there are many reasons that the people who don't care have given for not caring. But I would like to close with this one. They say we shouldn't care because it's none of our business. It didn't happen to someone in our community. 
Therefore, it is not our fight to fight. It is not a cause that pertains to us. This logic is flawed. Because whenever wrong is committed, Allah and his messenger have made it our business. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالْتَكُمْ مِنْكُمْ أُمَّةٌ يَدْعُونَ إِلَى الْخَيْرِ وَيَعْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَيَنْحَوْنَ عَلَى الْمُنْكَرِ وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمْ مُفْلِحُونَ He says, let there arise from amongst you a community that, that invites to all that is good, enjoining what is right and forbidding what is wrong, and they are the successful ones. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said in the Hadith of Isaid, مَنْ رَعَ مِنْكُمْ مُنْكَرًا فَلْيُغَيِّرْهُ بِيَدِهِ فَإِنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ فَبِلِسَانِهِ فَإِنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ فَبِقَلْبِهِ وَذَلِكَ أَضْعُفُ الْإِمَانِ Whoever amongst you witnesses an act of wrongdoing, then let him change it with his hands. And if he cannot, then let him change it with his tongue. And if he cannot, then with his heart, meaning let him disassociate himself with the wrongdoer until he leaves his wrongdoing. Say, I have nothing to do with that. I have no part with that. I'm opposed to that. I don't agree with that. Distance himself from the wrongdoer until he leaves his wrongdoing. That is the least of faith. Also, brothers and sisters, I want you to think. If we adopt this self-centered, self-absorbed, unsympathetic attitude toward the wrongs committed against people from other groups, we can't be surprised, we can't be upset when the tables are, tone, are turned and the shoe is on the other foot and wrongs are committed against us, we can't be surprised, we can't be upset if they remain silent. They don't stand up for us, they don't protect us, they don't defend us, they don't come to our aid. We can't be upset about that. What goes around comes around. As you treat others, so will you be treated. And remember, brothers and sisters, we can't be naive, we can't be dumb. This country was built upon othering. It's part of the DNA and fabric of this country to other, to pit one group against another. There has to be a whipping boy. There has to be a scapegoat. There has to be someone who all the problems are blamed on. And therefore, they receive the full brunt of the reprisals, the retribution, the backlash of the powers that be. Right now, at this moment, it's the blacks and Latinos. The blacks are criminalized. All of them are criminals. And therefore, they are imprisoned in this country more than any other ethnic group. Latinos, all of them are gang members. Even the women and children fleeing, fleeing from destabilized countries, even them, they're gang members. And we should be threatened by them. And therefore, they are detained in cages at the borders. And a wall is being built to keep them out. Brothers and sisters, when they are done with them, what do you think they're going to do? You think they'll be done? No, they're going to turn on you. They're going to turn on you. The Arabs amongst you will be terrorists, threats to national security. They'll have to be dealt with. The Asians, the educated Asians, they think we're safe. We're not terrorists. No. But you're taking all the good jobs depriving good people from this country from those opportunities, sucking up all the air, taking that wealth from America and putting it in your own communities, whether here or overseas. And you're not fully assimilating yourselves into this country. After they're done with them, they'll turn on you. That's the way it works. And when they turn on you, when they come for you, no one is going to stand up for you. Just like you didn't stand up for others, and I'm reminded here of the words of a poet in Nazi Germany 
who both explained and lamented simultaneously how the Nazis purged their society of the undesirables, one group at a time. He wrote, they came first for the communists, and I didn't speak up because I wasn't a communist. They came for the Jews, and I didn't speak up because I wasn't a Jew. They came for the trade unionists, and I didn't speak up because I wasn't a trade unionist. They came for the Catholics, and I didn't care. I didn't speak up because I'm Protestant. And then they came for me, and no one spoke up for me. The truly fortunate person, my dear, respected, and beloved brothers, is the one who learns from other people's mistakes. And if we don't learn from history, brothers and sisters, history is bound to what? To repeat itself. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who learn from the mistakes of others. Amen. May Allah make us from those who truly listen to the talk and follow the best of it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who truly care for others the way we care for our own selves. So Allah will care for us because he who is not merciful to the khalq, he who is not merciful to the creation cannot expect mercy from the creator. هذا وصلى الله وسلم مبارك من محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وقوموا إلى صلاتهم الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم I forgot to mention that we're we're dismissing via so we're going to practice social distancing so we're going to be we're going to practice social distancing as we leave the hall. And so um, you'll be dismissed.